G'day guys, the festive season continues to roll on in Don't Starve Together. The Year of the Beef Flow is upon us and we have a brand new mini game to go with it. I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about that. We'll talk about the other changes this update brings with it and briefly go over the roadmap Clay has given us for the remainder of 2021, which is shaping up to be another big one for Don't Starve Together. But first things first, the Beefalo Contest. Just like years gone by, all the craftables you'll need for this are found in the Beefalo Shrine. You'll need to donate a piece of wool to gain access to all the recipes, and I'm glad it's not another perishable food like carrots or meat as it was in previous years, meaning the shrine will stay open permanently instead of requiring a new offering every time the first one spoils. The first thing you'll want to craft is the beefalo bell. This bell will let you bond with one beef of your choosing and give it a name. This is more or less a streamlined taming process just for the purposes of this event. The beefalo will follow you around as long as you hold the bell and won't go into heat with the other beefs in spring. This doesn't replace taming however, you still need to domesticate the beefalo like normal if you want to ride it, fight with it, etc. But this isn't really necessary for the contest. The next thing to build is the grooming station to which you will be able to hitch your new beefalo and dress it up in a costume. Everyone starts with one costume already unlocked and there are nine in total which you can gather by participating in the contest. You can make many, many more combinations by mixing and matching with elements of the different styles as well. In order to take part in the contest, you'll need a few things though. The judges booth and at least four beefalo stages. Once you're done dressing up your beefalo, you can hitch it to one of the stages and pull the lever to summon the judge. And look who it is. <laughs> and I gotta say, I know my way around the trade-in. I've probably played more of the egg game than just about anyone watching this video, but I never expected Mr. Egg Game to make it into the actual game. There have been a lot of theories about who this guy actually is. Some are even going so far as to say that they are one of the ancients, akin to someone like Metheus or the Fuel Weaver, and I think with this update we can safely say that is not the case. Either that or he's really fallen on some hard times. Maybe 2020 was a rough year for this guy, and now he's adjudicating beefalo costume contests as a side gig. I don't know. Either way, he seems to have a strong if not very inconsistent opinion about beefalo costumes. Once you pull the lever, the contest begins and if there are any vacant stages, they'll be taken up by merms or pigs. The way the contest works is the judge will describe one of the beefalo in very vague terms and you have to try and pick which one he is describing. So your beefalo are not competing against one another for which one looks the best, rather you're competing against your friends or against random pigs and merms to work out which style of beef Mr. Egg Game is vibing at the moment. The winner of the contest gets a large pouch of lucky gold nuggets and everyone else gets a small pouch with one nugget, with the judge handing out a bunch of patent scrap at the end. I said you needed a minimum of four beef low stages but you can fit quite a few more if you want. This of course will make it a lot more difficult to work out which beefalo the judge is describing, but the judge will hand out much more scrap at the end as they give one for every beefalo entered in the contest. These pattern scraps can be used with the new sewing machine kit. Every combination of the three different scraps will give you a new recipe that unlocks a costume for your beefalo, so you'll need to go through the contest at least a few times if you want to unlock them all. Sadly, the judge will only be available once a day, and not if it's too late in the day or if there's some kind of danger present. Alternatively, you can spend your lucky gold nuggets on some extra pattern scrap to speed up the process. Sewing a new costume will also give you a beefalo costume doll, which you can give to the judge when he's available to get his appraisal of it. You can use what he says about each doll to give you a better idea of what he wants from the contest winners. There's also a new beefalo sketch for you to purchase with your winnings to make lovely statues of your prized beef. And that's about it for the beefalo contest, but that's not all for this update. There are a few quality of life changes as well, including the ability for you to pick up items while riding a beefalo. They can also come with you into the caves as long as you take the bell with you, which has interesting implications. I can't wait to see when people start fighting toadstool and fuel weaver on the back of a beefalo. Along with this, spider boats got a bit of a nerf. Planting a spider den on a boat will no longer continue to produce spiders, 
which is kind of the whole point. So it seems as though we'll have to go back to bunny men for farming silk and glands. And with every update of this kind, we always get a bunch of new skins, and the Year of the Beefalo is no exception. Although instead of a new skin set, the Victorian collection has been expanded to include a range of new belongings, including walls, fences, and a variety of cooking instruments, with a notably steampunk aesthetic which I absolutely adore. I'll definitely be saving up some spools for these items. All players also get a couple of free reskins with this update. There is the festive saddle and a lovely chest you get just for logging into the game. On top of this, you can claim items from previous Lunar events through the Clay Rewards program if you're missing any and have the points available. I'll leave a link in the description for some free points as well. And yet another thing that drops with this update was the DST roadmap for 2021. I'll leave a link so you can read into it yourself. But we're going to be getting three character refreshes over the course of the year, as well as one new character. I don't know if this will be a character from Hamlet or Shipwrecked, or if it'll be a brand new one, but I did make a video discussing which existing characters from the DLCs I'd like to see in DST, so hopefully Clay took some kind of notice of that. On top of this, we'll be getting three content updates and two quality of life updates. I don't know if this will mean the completion of the return of them, but for something that has been going on for well over a year and a half at this point, that is a definite possibility. And it does seem like we're getting towards the end of that saga anyway. We also got a little teaser image for the next content update, which looks like something that fits right over the mysterious energy, but again we'll have to wait and see what that's about in the coming months. We'll also be getting a new Summer Solstice event to complement the Winter's Feast event that we get at the end of every year. This means that there won't be a massive gap between the Year of the Beefalo and Hallowed Nights, which is always a good thing. And that is just about it for this update. As always, let me know your thoughts on the Year of the Beefalo and what you are looking forward to seeing from the updates in the coming months. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Take care.